I'm going to show you how to pick up a property for less than $23,000. As someone living in New York City, that's got to be like blowing your freaking mind, but it's not too good to be true. We're going to talk about it right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the MLS Search and Analysis Show. This is Holton Wise TV. Subscribe, like, share, contact my team if you like what I'm talking about. Augie, this show is for you, dog. You're in New York City. You want low-income multifamily properties, right? Me and you, we've been working together for quite some time, going over deals, running an analysis, figuring out if the deals make sense. Today's deal, it's right up your alley, brother. It's going to require less than $23,000 of your money. It's in the Cleveland market. As you know, brother, my team... We can handle it all for you there in Cleveland, right? Because you're in New York City. It'd be pretty fucking hard for you to show an empty apartment in Cleveland when you're in New York. It'd be pretty fucking hard to paint a bedroom that's in Cleveland when you're in New York. So that's why you came to me. You came to Holton Wise. We have full services for it all. Tenant screening, tenant leasing, property management, construction, painting, plumbing, landscaping. I don't know what I'm leaving out. We got insurance throughout the entire state of Ohio. So if you're a landlord and you're watching Augie's show right now on Holden Wise TV and you're like, hey, I fucking like money. Well, who the fuck doesn't, right? One way to make money, you earn more money. Another way to make money, you spend less money. So if you think you're spending too much money on your insurance, hit my team up, dude. We'll give you a no uh, commitment quote, right? If uh, we can't save you money, well, you keep doing what the fuck you're doing, right? But I think we're probably going to be able to save you money because all we do is landlord insurance policies, right? We shop them out to all the other companies out there, right? So, uh, you know, we're not your regular insurance guy that's going to also insure your fucking boat and, uh, like, your mansion in California or New York or wherever the fuck you live, right? We don't fuck with that, right? What we do, all we do is Ohio rental properties, right? So because of that, we're the best at that, right? Stick with your regular people for the boats. But Augie's like, hey, man, can we get back to me? Can we get back to my property? I don't want to talk about insuring some viewer's boat. I apologize, Augie. Back to you, brother. This deal is going to be under 23 k out of your pocket. It is going to check off all the boxes uh, that you're looking for that me and you've been going back and forth on over the last series of videos. In addition, bro, what I have for you, too, something that I don't know if it popped up uh, on your radar yet, right? When I do these MLS shows for you guys, I will not ever utilize one of the videos you paid me to make to sell you my own listings, right? No, I work for you and you alone. I go out on the market and find properties that fit for you, right? So this property that I'm going to analyze for you after the commercial break has nothing to do with me. But why I have you here, Augie, just based on the fact you've been out bid a few times, uh, I want to take your attention to a couple Lorraine properties that fit all your needs on my other show, the Investment Properties for Sale show. I'm going to go ahead and link those in the show notes below uh, because I think you probably would be interested in those, but not going to analyze them for you burning one of your videos, bro. I have a different property for you. I just wanted to bring that to your attention while I have you. So let's get into the property that I've gone out on the market and found for you, Augie, right after this. You might be wondering why I'm walking around in a bikini. Because this is America, that's why. Land of the free, home of the brave, the land of opportunity. Like the opportunity to click the link below and connect with motivated sellers nationwide. Welcome back. Let's jump into those numbers, the neighborhood, all the deets, all the stuff you guys come here for, right? The address, 7901 Dearborn, Cleveland, 44102. It's been on the market for 17 days, priced at 92900 It was on the market, then it was off the market. It's available, right? The seller, the listing agent, they said through no fault of the seller has it fallen out of contract. Now, I know. Like, you know, guys, I've sold over $200 million worth of this stuff, right? 
I deal with a lot of investors, okay? A lot of you, okay? Every time a property falls out of market, there falls out of contract, goes back on the market, there's always like a slew of investors who are like, ah, oh my God, it fell out of contract. There must be some secret reason. It's a horrible deal. I'll lose all my money. Like, there's like a segment of you guys that like your mind like automatically goes there. Freaking relax, okay? First of all, having sold over $200 million for this stuff, I could tell you, like, dude, there's just a, a lot of flaky people in the world. Maybe you're watching this right now and you're like, I'm not flaky, that's not me. Well, that's great, motherfucker, but you know what? I deal with thousands of people and a lot of these motherfuckers are flaky, okay? That's why, uh, well, one of the many reasons why we charge up front with the MLS Search and Analysis Show, right? You want to work with me, you're going to pay for it. I don't work with people unless they pay me up front, right? Because of how flaky investors are, right? So if you're watching this and that's not you, that's fucking great, bro. Happy for you. But that's, you know, mathematically, right? 95% of you are flakes. It's it, it happens, right? So when you get these sellers, they probably dealt with a flake. Although... That's not the only way a property falls out of contract. Sometimes it falls out of contract because the buyer who's not a flake gets a home inspection and there's some serious undisclosed issues, right? Don't think that's the case here. They're telling us that's not the case. But we're not just going to trust them, folks. No, trust but verify. We are going to get your own third-party home inspection on this property. And if that turns out to be the situation, we will know it, and then we can responsibly exit from the deal or negotiate additional discounts on the purchase price, right? So don't automatically think just because the deal fell out of market, it fell out of contract, went back on the market, it's the end of the world, right? It could be a flaky buyer. could be bad financing. It could be an issue with the property. But we're going to figure that out, folks, right? What the previous jerk-off did is irrelevant because we are going to do the proper due diligence on our own, right? As for the neighborhood, it's like a C-ish grade neighborhood, D-C, right? Honestly, if you're talking like low C, high D, you're really splitting hairs, folks. It's kind of the same, right? Tenant base, very manageable. Uh, we can handle dealing with them, but at the same time, right, these are people that, uh, you know, they're job hopping or, you know, this or that, right? You will do evictions if you're dealing with cash paying tenants in these neighborhoods. It's just part of the game. So what I think, I think for the long haul, investors are the best suited to put Section 8 tenants in these properties. It's like the cheat code of these kind of neighborhoods, right? Because all of your problems that cost us money as investors, folks, they all stem from people not being able to pay rent. COVID hit. I lost my job. I can't pay rent. Okay, boom. That sucks, right? Then you got evictions. You got to renovate the unit for the next tenants. You got vacant units. Maybe people are squatting. Yeah, all the problems come from somebody not being able to pay rent. Oh, my car broke down. I couldn't afford to fix it. Uh, I lost my job. Oh, my car broke down. I used my rent money to fix it, right? All these issues are pretty much solved if you go Section 8. Government always pays, right? So I think the best, most consistent way to earn a solid, stable return in these neighborhoods is to go Section 8, right? For the long haul, this bad boy is going to be bringing in two tenants at seven fifty a month, eighteen k a year, right? Of that eighteen k, of course, you have fixed and variable expense estimates we have to calculate for. So we'd be looking at approximately $9,294 a year on average of expense estimates, leaving us with an estimated NOI of 8706 As far as the price, right? They're asking 929 which is pretty darn good in this particular market. 2021 properties are flying, right? We have two legacy tenants in the property already, okay? So what we have here is people already living here, okay? As far as that goes, we got one tenant in there at 650 the other at 550 But remember, your market rents for units like this, folks, they're 750 So we want to keep these people in there as long as they're still paying. Maybe slowly increase their rents, right? We want to avoid turnovers at all costs because the more turnovers you do, the less money you make. All told, the units look pretty decent, but... If these folks turn over, you're going to have to upgrade their units, right? You upgrade their units. You got to pay money, right? You got to pay money to make them nicer. You got to pay money to lease them. You got to 
uh, pay money and the fact that you're not receiving rent during the time we're upgrading the units, right? So you want to keep them folks in there, right? But all told, pretty solid deal. If you run the numbers based on the current rents, it will still cash flow, and you know you got meat on the bone, right? So it's a solid, solid move here, right? So with that said, they're asking 92.9. I think we could squeeze out a little discount, but we still want to be very aggressive, right? So I think we need to go in at 90. You put 90, right? An offer of 90, you're going to put 22,500 of your own cash into this deal. We're going to go ahead and have a bank kick in 67,500. The financing, man, that is one of the main reasons I love investing in real estate, right? You can't open up a restaurant. You can't open up a insurance brokerage, which I know. I own one, right? Can't open an insurance brokerage, a tattoo shop, a hair salon, a barber shop. You can't open those businesses up and anticipate somebody giving you a loan for 75% of those businesses for 30 years, fixed interest, low interest, tax deductible, right? Can't do it. But you can do it with real estate investing, right? So even if you're not trying to be a full-time real estate investor, because of that, I see why I don't see why anybody with disposable income wouldn't want to quadruple their income uh, with a loan like that, build out their net worth, right? You could easily, with 10 mortgages, build out a million-dollar net worth while working your day job, right? So because of that, that's why I love investing in real estate. You finance it that way. We are looking at a projection of a 24% cash-on-cash return. All told, I think it's a solid deal. Let me know what you want to do. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.